or what time, uh, but excited to kind of get started today. Um, all right, so I'll just talk for a minute or so and then give it over to our amazing co-host. Um, but here's what to expect today um, is people are going to be joining in uh, throughout the hour, depending on their schedule. But um, here's what to expect is um, we're going to be talking about plethora, which is a CSTA plus benefit. Um, don't worry, this webinar is for everyone, so you don't have to be a plus member to be here. Um, but if you're interested in plus membership is I do have a discount for international members that I will follow up with folks that are on the webinar for. So exciting. Um, my name is Kate. I'm at CSTA and I'm here just to kind of help support this journey as you're figuring out your professional uh, kind of journey in itself. Um, so this webinar is gonna be recorded. Um, none of your faces are gonna be on it, just the folks that are presenting. Um, you can ask questions in the Zoom chat through after, and if there's a little time afterwards, um, and then folks are going to be muted. Um, and then the other thing I'll say uh, before I turn it over to our awesome co-host is um, I will share out this slide deck but if you want to redeem this benefit and you're a PLUS member, um, I'll share out the link to get to it, but it's underneath the membership tab, CSTA PLUS benefits, and then you search for Plethora. So I'm more than happy to kind of share that information there, but that's all I have to kind of be uh, sharing today. Really excited to kind of um, turn it over to our co-host. Um, Effie um, and other Plethora folks, would you mind introducing yourselves? And feel yeah, free to start so sharing any slide decks you have. I'll, I'll, I'll start. Uh, good evening here from Israel. Uh, thank you, Kate, for facilitating this. My name is Effie Baruch. I'm co-founder and CEO at Plethora. Uh, together with me is uh, my uh, partner, uh, computer science PhD, Dr. Rami Morelli who will take over the, uh, the more intensive uh, part later and show you some more uh, of our beautiful platform. Uh, I will start with a, a quick uh, uh, presentation uh, of, the, of, of our platform and the concepts according to which we uh, uh, work and of course demonstrate the, the, uh, the uh, uh, platform. And Rami will take over and focus a little bit more on the pedagogic and more interesting computer science parts. Uh, so with no further ado, let me share my screen and we can start. Okay, so uh, I'll, I'll use Kate's advice and, and uh, present a question to you. This is a question we asked uh, uh, fourth graders uh, in Israel, 250 of them. And the question goes like this, a rabbit and a turtle have to cross a river. It takes the rabbit one hour and two hours for the turtle. Question is how long will it take them to get there? Now, what I'm asking you to put in the chat is what do you think those fourth graders uh, answered? Let's give it a 30 second, seconds, see what you think. They said three, 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 two, three. Okay, so we have a lot of answers here. Two, two and three are, are the most common. And, and again, th this is what uh, we presented them with. Uh, the, answer, the answer is two. Uh, most children answered three. I mean, they know how to add and multiply, but there is no math operation they can apply to solve this problem. And it requires a different kind of thinking, what we all know is computational thinking. Now, computational thinking, to put us on the same page, I know you're coming from this, this field exactly, is a set of problem solving methods that involve expressing problems and the solutions in ways that a computer could also execute. And according to the International Society, Society for uh, Technology in, in Education, ISTE, this systematic approach to solving problems is at the foundation of not just computer science, but many other subject areas and careers as well. And what Prethora does is uses gamification to teach youth of all ages the foundations of computational thinking so, that, so they can use them in every aspect of their life. Now, you coming from the computer science area, you know that teaching computational thinking or computer science is a challenge. And it is usually mediated using coding platforms. 
Coding is great. We love coding and the platforms are beautiful. Yet coding asks children to translate their thoughts to a language that a computer understands. And today's job market shows that coding is biased to wins. Let's not forget that coding is simply a small fragment of computational thinking and it is hard to project it to day-to-day -day life. We at Plethora do it differently. We teach children to solve complex problems. We encourage students to plan algorithms in their mother tongue language, and this is important, and I'll show it later, and solve challenges while learning computer science concepts. Most importantly, we focus on pure cognitive processes, and our true gender neutral platform encourages creativity over technical syntax that computers understand. I mentioned it earlier, Plethora was validated in an independent academic research that tested general problem solving skills, similar to the one with the rabbit and the turtle. And it came up with uh, proving that practicing our platform improves uh, logical reasoning performance by 40% and competency level, the ability of children, the confidence of children to approach this problem by 12%. And in essence, it demonstrated that students were able to internalize and transfer the knowledge they gained with Plethora to other domains. Uh, we started our commercial distribution approximately 18 months ago, and so far close to 13 million challenges were played by over 250,000 students today. Amongst them, we can proudly declare, declare that our platform is truly gender neutral, 50-50 boys and girls, which is very uncommon in our industry. And of course, teachers and students find it exciting and engaging. Uh, during uh, uh, COVID-19 lockdown, by the way, we adopted ourselves and recorded lessons for the Israeli Ministry of Education, which who we work with, and they were broadcasted in national TV to every household in Israel. At this point, I'm going to move to uh, showing you the platform itself. <clears throat> And this is the portal of our uh, platform of Plethora. What you see here in the circles are, are the different computer science topics that we teach. Each one of the circles is what we call a world. Every such circle includes a, 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 a level list that we compose for that specific age group. Uh, uh, we, we start to teach at the fourth grade assuming this is coming with teachers and uh, so fourth grade until the ninth grade and you can see the different levels that every class uh, will get every level will look something like this this is level number three in the first topic cause and effect uh, in this in this level you can see the circle running on the screen so on screen one blue circle our mission is to reach 10 blue circles and what we do is get from one blue circle to those 10 using this sentence. So we need to complete the sentence now. I will do it the first time. Later, it will be great if you can join me. So this sentence says, when a blue circle hits something, then a blue circle is created. And this is where we start to get uh, students engaged in the, in the uh, uh, understanding how the platform looks like. Of course, level number one is an introductory level with uh, uh, all the needed information so kids can uh, hop onto the platform pretty easily. So let's complete this sentence now. The options I have is to complete it with the frame or the blue circle, another blue circle, so I can just drag the right answer here. So now the sentence says, when a blue circle hits the frame, then a blue circle is created. You can see right off the bat that this is a, a, a sentence that students read, again, in their mother tongue language. We have it in different languages, including Spanish, Arabic, uh, Chinese, uh, Portuguese, and other languages as well. Uh, it is very easy to add a language to our platform. So this is why we, we keep on adding them as we go. And at this point, I run the level and see that it actually works. now know that every blue circle, not just the first one that hits the frame, will create a new one and we will reach 10 blue circles very fast and we can move on to the next level. I earned three stars in this level and can hop on to the next level. Level number four, uh, if you would like to help me, that'd be great. So on screen we have four triangles. Our mission is to eliminate them all using this sentence. So when a purple triangle hits 
something than a purple triangle something. So uh, there are no, not too many options. So I'll, I'll complete this one and we'll do it, the next one together. So when a purple triangle hits the frame, then a purple triangle is deleted. And this is what will happen to all the triangles. It will happen fast. And we can again move on to the next level. Level number 25 in cause and effect is a little bit more complicated. So you saw what we had as early and introductory level. This is one that requires students to implement the knowledge they gained until they reached that point. Take the problem, break it down into the smaller pieces of it and uh, come up with a, a, a solution for, for this problem. You can see that we are providing hints, so students can take hints and then solve the level. Uh, we allow up to two hints. Again, we change it uh, uh, sometimes, but usually it's two hints. Uh, and I'm moving on to a new uh, level. This is uh, a new topic, actually. It's user interaction. This is where we uh, ask students to be active in the runtime. So in this, in this level, we have four uh, uh, squares, four red squares on screen. Again, we want to eliminate them. And now the sentence, uh, we have a level with two sentences. Uh, it'd be great if someone can help me solve this one. I'll just uh, go over it when the screen something, then an orange pentagon will be created. And when something hits the red square, then the red square, something will happen to it. So I'll, I'll give you two, two seconds to... Uh, Let me start. So I'm going to say that when the screen is clicked, then the orange pentagon will be created. And of course, what I'm left with is eliminating the red squares by hitting the orange pentagons. Now, nothing will happen until I click the screen and create the pentagon. I can do it slowly and create one, and it will take time until I eliminate all of them. But of course, I can create more, and by that, contributing to the effort of eliminating all of them very fast. Uh, the last level I'm going to show you is level number 57. This is a new topic. It's parallelism. So here again, you can see that we are uh, uh, the, the topics themselves and the levels themselves become more sophisticated. Uh, students are required to implement, again, the, all the knowledge they gained with the previous topics they've learned and then implement it here. And you can see, again, the fact that you can use uh, hints and then implement or, or solve the rest of the level. So that's, that's the uh, uh, curriculum that we, Plethora, provide students with or you as teachers. And the second, or the second half of it, which is uh, for us uh, much more uh, fascinating and interesting, is the ability for students to build their own levels, to create their own levels and then introduce those levels to, the, to, to their, uh, their classmates. Uh, let's take an example of the first level we played, the, the one with the one blue circle and 10 blue circles, and create a new level that uh, works accordingly. So I'm going to say that on screen we have one blue circle. This is our opening screen. Our mission will be to create 10 blue circles. And now I'm a student and I need to write this sentence or sentences that will bring me from uh, uh, one to 10. I don't need to complete uh, and solve a puzzle. I need to create my own. So the sentence says, or what I'm creating now will say that when a blue circle is clicked, I added user interaction, then a blue circle is created. And this is exactly uh, how I can finish it because I can click a blue circle nine times and I will have 10 circles, but I'm gonna do it more interesting and add a loop. 
Now note that I used the loop only after I created a sentence. So I didn't think about the loop initially. I did think that it was it, it will be very effective if I, if I add it uh, uh, for this specific uh, action. And I'm, I'm assuming Rami will focus on that a little bit uh, later. And now I'm creating the riddle. So this is the sentence. We will test it, test it in a second. But let's say that I'm going to remove some of the cards and add a destructor. Test the level. So reminding you, I need to click the blue level, which I just did. And a loop will create nine more uh, blue circles. And we will reach 10 circles. And at this point, I'm submitting my level to either my class so the class can play it, or the entire international plethora community of students uh, and teachers, actually. And they can play it and uh, uh, like the levels and you know, tell about it to, to others. And of course, sort them of, uh, according to, to uh, uh, difficulty levels and more, more criteria, uh, allowing them to experience uh, uh, A, building levels and B, playing levels of, of their uh, friends and, and uh, other players. So we just focused on the game itself and the studio. And this is what we call the students part. Last but not least, definitely not least, is the teachers part. Uh, teachers have a dashboard that presents them with information about their class uh, performance and of course, individual students so as they can see every topic uh, uh, that they've taught with the average scores and what happens as a, in an overview about the class itself. And of course, uh, looking at students, see where there are problems. So let's say that I'm going to choose parallelism one because there are issues there. So I go ahead and click parallelism one. I can see all the levels 51 until 75 that were solved or were played by my uh, students and monitor exactly which one of them had issues. And at the end of the course, uh, uh, get to a reporting card for, for a specific student. So that gives you perfect monitoring of your class. It helps a lot. We know today it helps a lot for teachers that do hybrid learning. So they have a Zoom class with their students. They teach them a lesson plan that I will show uh, in a second uh, for 10, 15 minutes, and then they allow them to play at their free time or for the rest of the, of the uh, uh, lesson, uh, and, then, and then monitor their progress. Lesson plans uh, that we uh, have are, uh, were written by a team of computer science uh, experts here in Israel, uh, led by the Professor uh, Judith Galezer. And those lesson plan focused on taking the concept themselves, uh, and doesn't matter which concept, and providing them context in our uh, real world. So every concept here, every uh, uh, idea that we teach, every computer science uh, concept is being translated uh, to teachers and students in a very effective way so they can actually use this uh, 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 ID concept, computer science concept uh, in their day-to-day -day life. And a lot of the lesson is going for uh, offline activities and examples so students understand the concept. And only then we move towards teaching the uh, uh, plethora platform. This specific lesson, I love it a lot. It, it uh, uh, surrounds uh, uh, abstraction. And I guess, again, uh, Rami will cover it uh, uh, in a minute. Uh, so you can see that we uh, uh, invested a lot in providing uh, really good uh, information and lesson plans. So teachers, not necessarily computer science teachers, but all teachers, can teach students uh, 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 computational thinking. Uh, at this point, uh, I'm going to be answering a, a, a question in the chat while Rami takes over uh, to the more fascinating part of our uh, uh, meeting today. Uh, and we will meet at the end uh, of, of this session. OK, so how? Uh, hi, uh, very excited uh, to be here. And uh, as I said, 
uh, it's a uh, it's quite an honor and the challenge and the and the pleasure to be in the company of uh, computer science teachers because usually uh, the platform is also uh, given to teachers who are not really uh, with background in in uh, computer science uh, because it was made also to be available for for uh, teachers of sciences and math but since we are here from the computer science co community uh, i took the the liberty and show some more advanced uh, uh, issues that I think will uh, touch and relate to some of you being uh, knowing the challenges in teaching uh, computer science. So um, I'll share my screen. Uh, okay. Okay, so you see my screen. Uh, so as I said, we're going into the advanced topics. And I'm going to work, walk through the, the issues that we are uh, uh, teaching and give some examples of levels from each, uh, from each topic. The idea is that I took some uh, not very difficult levels, but some that show the, the challenge and not very, very, very simple. So as I said, uh, one of the things we, uh, we, we like in our platform is that parallelism is being taught in a rather uh, a direct and seamless way because the rules are monitored con concurrently and actions may be performed simultaneously. So a, a kid can see, you can see uh, at the bottom uh, part that when the screen is clicked, then a, a red circle is created. And when a screen is clicked, then a yellow circle is created. So these are two rules, they are running in parallel. And when the screen will be clicked, will be clicked two actions are going to happen in parallel. And we also show that it can be given in another sentence saying that when the screen is clicked, then a red circle is created and a yellow circle is created. So we are talking about the different uh, uh, variations of, uh, of parallelism and how it can be viewed either by saying different things about something or saying that one trigger can cause multiple actions. Uh, the next thing that I would like to talk about is the is abstraction. Uh, you probably all know about uh, when you want to teach uh, abstraction in computer science or when using coding, you need to talk about inheritance, about polymorphism, and about all kinds of complicated, quite complicated, at least for young age, uh, issues. We're focus focusing in plethora on abstracting the object details, and then we're talking about abstraction in this way. So. You can see here uh, images from the lesson plan on, on abstractions. We're showing uh, art that abstracts all kinds of animals. We're showing maps and talking about what it, how map, a map is in abstraction. Uh, and here I'll show an example of a level. Um, okay. So here's an example of a level. And here you can see uh, that uh, it, it's, not very, it's not very intuitive if it's, if it's your first time. But what you can see is that we are looking at, at uh, shapes uh, without specifying their exact color or size. Uh, and here the, the kids can learn about what is abstracting by neglecting or by not specifying the specific details. So in this case, we start with one big uh, uh, red pentagon and uh, zero uh, um, yellow squares. And we need to reach three uh, yellow squares. And the idea here is that you, you, you want to say that when, uh, that's the, the, the first intuition, when the pentagon hits the frame, then uh, a yellow, a small uh, uh, a yellow uh, square will be created. But then uh, <coughs> you, you, you need to say that it doesn't really matter which pentagon. So you're taking the pentagon and say, uh, when any pentagon hits the frame, then a yellow circle, a yellow a square is created and the pentagon is deleted. And then I need to save the, 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 the pentagon for the next uh, card, because here it says when any small uh, square hits the frame, then the small square turns to big, and then I need to create another pentagon for the next iteration. So I need to create a specific pentagon. 
So here it says, when a pentagon hits the frame, then a small yellow square is created and the, the pentagon is disappearing. And when the small square hits the frame, then it turns big and the pentagon is deleted and we can see it running. So if they're going to be, each one is going to create a small one and the small one is going to, to turn to big until we reach the three. The next issue is multiplicity. Usually when we're talking about uh, coding or about uh, programming uh, objects, we're talking about a specific object and we're doing things uh, with this object. And if we want to do something with several objects, we need to, to develop some mechanisms, some loops, some array, some way to hold the objects. We need to go into many details uh, to be able to talk about multiple objects. But multiple objects are part of, the, of, part of our life. And it's another method of, of abstraction. You want to say something like all the people, all the students, when the, when the bell rings, all the students will exit the class. This is something very logic to say. So here again, we're, uh, talk, we allow in plethora to talk about multiple objects. Again, I'll show this. So in this case, we're starting with one uh, yellow triangle and we need to finish with at least five red uh, circles. So we say when uh, uh, the screen is clicked, I will create the yellow triangle. And then when the yellow triangle will, create, will be created, then a circle will be created. And when the circle meets another circle, then all triangles will be deleted. So in this case, I can create as many uh, yellow triangles as I want. They will in turn create red circles. And from time to time, all the, uh, uh, all the triangles uh, will be deleted until I get the five, uh, five uh, circles. And it, it says only, meaning they are not allowed to be any shapes other than the, the red circles. So again, I can create, every time I create a triangle, another circle is created. So I'll create five or six, and here it goes. So again, talking about multiplicity, the fact that I can talk about multiple objects and say that all the objects change their color, all the objects disappear, etc. One of the most challenging things to, to teach in computer science is recursion, and it is usually left for very high uh, grades. The, the reason why it's hard to teach recursion, and you probably know it uh, as, as good as I, as well as I do, is the fact that uh, uh, kids are not, uh, do not get the hang of what we call the copy model. The fact that we have a function that is calling the function itself and what does it mean that the function is calling it? How can I assume that the function does what it, does, what it should do if it calls itself and I don't know what it does, et cetera? This is what is called the copy model. It's very hard to teach. In plethora, because we're using visual uh, rules, the trigger is, is visual and the rule, you can see exactly how it activates itself. It says that when a pentagon is created, then this is the halting uh, uh, condition of the, of the recursion. If the number of pentagon is less than 32, then a pentagon is created and then this activates the rule itself. And we can see this is taken from the recursion lesson plan. So we also explain the, the students uh, how it works. So this is the first instance of the rule. And when this pentagon is created, it activates a second instance of the rule, which in turn activates a third instance, etc. The nice thing about uh, uh, recursion, again, because we are not focused on, on programming and on coding, we're talking about the, 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 the concept of, of recursion. So we allow ourselves to, to enrich the kids with other concepts. So in our lesson plan, we talked about how we can uh, build the trees uh, recursively. We talk about the Koch uh, snowflake paradigm. We talk about Sharpinsky triangles, we're talking about the Italian cauliflower. These are all 
concepts of recursion as, as kids can see them in, in nature or in geometry, or they can try themselves to build these kinds of, 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 uh, of uh, shapes. So this is also very nice and it gives a, a, a holistic uh, understanding of the concept of recursion. Another nice thing is that we teach real time. Now, when you think about real time, those that are working with real time systems, I've been working many years in developing real time systems, and you, you immediately think about threads and interrupts and all kinds of like very, very fast milliseconds or uh, actions. But we're not thinking, not talking about this time. We're talking about the essence of real time. And the essence of real time is that in, in computer programs or when you're talking about algorithms that, that need to do something in real time, they have timing constraints. And you need to know the timing constraints. You need to understand the timing constraints. And sometimes you need to plan uh, the, the user operations accordingly. Uh, so this is an, a, a nice example of, uh, of uh, real time. Here you can see an example uh, of some rules, but I will show something uh, uh, nice. Uh, so in this case, we start with nothing on the, on the screen, and we need to get to five blue pentagons and ten green pentagons. And there is the, the, the rule says that whenever I click the screen, two things will be created: one here and one here, and one is constrained by the timer. The timer is the way we we talk about real time. We just we can reset it. We can ask what's its value, etc. So I need to make sure that the, the, I, I create more, even though I, I click the same, the same amount of times, I need to create more uh, green pentagons. And this, the nice thing is that it can be solved um, in, in various ways. I can say that at the beginning, I want to create uh, more uh, uh, pentagons. So I can say something like, whenever I click uh, uh, the screen, a green pentagon will be created. And only if time is greater than five, then a blue pentagon will be created. So in this time, I need to plan my, and this is very nice to see kids doing this, students doing this, they, they see the rules and then they plan what they're going to, to do. It's not only planning the rules, it's planning their, their interactions with the game. So here, of course, I need to, to click five times before, uh, before I get the, the, to, the to the fifth second. So the next five clicks will create only five uh, blue pentagons. So I do something like one, two, three, four, five. I'll wait to five. And then each click will create two, three, four, five. And here I reach. So this is one way to, to, to react. Users can always try try uh, other ways. So I can do also the, uh, uh, another thing and say, OK, I can do the other way. I want to say that only if it's less than five, I can, I can click, I can create a five. So in this case, I will, I will try to create five before the five second. And then need to, to wait to five and then continue with that. So what's nice with real time and, and timing constraints is that, and of course it gets much more uh, complicated, is that uh, users, uh, uh, students not only plan the rules and understand how to work with the timer, it also comes to a, like a tactical planning of how you're going to play. And sometimes it gets to, okay, I need to click two times before the, the second uh, uh, second, and then three times before the fourth second, etc. So it's very nice to see this. And it's also a, another level of planning. We also uh, introduced the concept of uh, variables uh, and just, just to allow to do all kinds of mathematical operations. Uh, so what's nice in plethora is that you don't just get an exercise, how much is 27 divided by nine? You, you get a situation like in every challenge here. So you need to understand the situation. Then you need to formulate the problem. 
And then during the, the solution, you need to solve some mathematical exercise. Uh, so here I'll show an example with this exercise. So here, this is the, our, our uh, representation for, uh, for a variable. So we start with nine squares and the value of the variable is zero. And the mission is to get to 27. Now I have nine squares and it says only again. So I need to get to the variable uh, having 27, but no shapes on the screen. So I, I understand that I need to delete the square. Okay, so whenever a square is clicked, the square will be deleted. And now the question is, what should I do with the, with the variable? So here again, I need to think, okay, how do I get to 27? And I have nine squares. So now I, I formulate the problem and ask myself, okay, I need to divide 27 to nine squares and so to get to the number three. So I, need, I can, and here again, there are all kinds of destructions. Should I put three? Should I multiply by three? Should I add three? And of course, in this case, we need to add three. So, oh, this is something uh, nice. So, uh, so I'm going to, uh, uh, to add three to the variable nine times. So I'll get to 27. So again, I have nine squares. And every time I click on one of them, the variable is increased and I can get to 27. Um, I have some more uh, nice math uh, uh, things like uh, factorial and power. I'm not going to show it here. I'll show it at the end if there is enough time, but I leave time to questions. The last thing I want to show uh, before the, 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 we get to questions and to other math uh, issues, if, if you like, is that sometimes uh, it can get really crazy uh, and when I'm saying crazy, I mean really for uh, for very smart uh, uh, kids. Or uh, I'm, this is something that even I that I know the solution. I'm looking at these uh, these levels, and I always uh, uh, get a hard time solving it. But also, but but it is solvable, and it is challenging. Just want to say that this game can be very simple on one hand, and can be very very complicated and challenging on the other hand. So uh, I don't know if uh, probably most of you know, but this is the, uh, a visual representation of the Fibonacci uh, series. So for those of you who, who don't know, the Fibonacci series is a series of numbers that each one of them is the sum of the previous two. So it starts with one and one, then it's two and three and five and eight and 13 and 21, etc. So here is a very nice way to create the Fibonacci series. Uh, no, this one, no. Okay, and uh, it builds on two shapes, uh, green shapes and yellow shapes. And you see the mission here is to get to 13 and 21, which are two uh, uh, consecutive uh, uh, elements in the Fibonacci series. And we start with clicking the screen. And whenever we click the screen, we, we create one green star. Now, it's going to be recorded so you can watch it uh, later and try to understand it's even, uh, uh, it's not very easy to, to, to explain. But what it does it, whenever we, we click a, a red, a, a yellow, I'll just click so, so to, to get it all to our, uh, so we can see it. Whenever click, we will click a green star, the, another star is created, and then all the green star stars are changing their color to yellow and all the yellow are changing the color to green. This is how we uh, uh, um, change, replace the, the previous number with, with, uh, with, uh, with a new number. And then whenever a green star is changing its color to yellow, we add another star, we, we create another star. So actually when it says here, all the yellow stars are changing the color to green, it means that for each one of them, uh, sorry, for, for, sorry, 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 whenever it says all the green stars are changing their color to yellow, it means that for each one of them, this rule is going to be applied. And for each one of them, another 
uh, green star is going to be created. So you can see it running. I'm clicking one, it's turning to, uh, to one, and then you can see that that they are changing every time the, 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 the yellow stars are the previous number and the green stars are the next one. And so they're accumulating, uh, et cetera. I know it's a little complicated. You can watch it and try to understand, uh, but it can be very challenging. Of course, you can uh, uh, let also kids try to, to figure out how to do all kinds of this stuff. And, so I just don't finish with this uh, complicated. I, I will go one level uh, uh, easier, and I will just show uh, um, the <coughs> sorry uh, the the factorial. Um, so this is a nice uh, way to show the the factorial. I want to get to one hundred and twenty. I'm starting with one, and I have only one. Uh, red square, one, uh, one red circle, uh, and I said that whenever I click the red circle, then a red circle is created, and then something happens to the variable, and I need to get to 120. So the question is, what should I do? And we made it so in such a way that you will not be able because it starts with one. You cannot you cannot do it. With plus, de with plus 10, of course you can try. And you cannot do it with, by multiplying by five and not by, by multiplying by two. But the right thing to do is to say that you want to multiply it by the number of, uh, of red circles. So it means that when I have one, it will be one. And then when I have two, it will be two. And then when I have three, it will be six. So I get the factorial of one uh, uh, multiplied by two, three, four, five, until I get to 120. So you can see it here running. I'm clicking. It's one, but I have two. Again, six, 24, and 120. Um, okay. This, uh, um, this was the this was a little uh, glance to the more advanced uh, issues in the in plethora, and I'm handing it over to Elfi. Yeah, thanks, Rami. Uh, I admit it was a little bit complicated for me. So uh, uh, this is why I have Rami with me. Uh, um, what I wanted to say first, again, thank uh, Kate uh, for this partnership with CSTA. And as, uh, as she mentioned earlier, CSTA plus uh, benefits are available for you. Uh, I did want to want to, to uh, uh, mentioned that in the coming two weeks and to celebrate this uh, partnership with the CSTA, we would like to offer uh, um, the entire platform to every school that wants it around the world. We're excited about the fact that uh, we have uh, a presence here from all around the world uh, for $1,000 per school. Uh, so that'd be available. We uh, it's a very rare uh, price for us, but we would like to again celebrate it and allow you uh, uh, to take uh, to seize the moment. Uh, and uh, this offer will be available for the coming two weeks. Of course, you can still use your CSTA Plus advantages and try our system uh, and see if you like it. We're open for questions. Any question you might have now. That was awesome. I think I'm just absorbing. Thanks, Effie. Um, I think I had a question that was answered, um, but it looks like some questions are coming in the chat. One from Paula is like, is this the lifetime price? Is it like annually? If you want to talk about that. So we, yeah, we usually uh, uh, price it uh, per student uh, for the entire year. This price I just offered is, uh, a, you know, being the fact that we're in the middle of, of the corona crisis and we know that a lot of schools or students are, are uh, learning from home uh, and the fact we are already in january so we'd like to offer this price for the entire for an entire school until the end of school year uh, of this year um, and it will include 
the entire platform again for all the students. So it's it, it, the platform is suitable for students from the fourth grade to ninth grade. So feel free to, to redeem this, uh, this price at this point. That's awesome. Cool. Um, I guess uh, if you could just clarify what languages it's available in. I think um, some folks might have missed that. Yeah. Uh, so platform is available at uh, English, Hebrew, Portuguese, Italian, uh, Spanish, uh, French, Arabic, and Chinese. Those are the languages. Awesome. Gotcha. And I think there was a question. Um, Javier asked, is this JavaScript or Python earlier on? Well, I guess this answer, this was already during the uh, session itself. We're not using any coding language. Uh, mm -hmm. so. I also see a question about uh, do students need to provide an email to use the platform? Yeah, I, I answered this one. Ah, okay, sorry. Students don't need to register with their email, of course. Right. That's helpful because I think that can be um, a bit sticky in terms of if students don't have that, that information. I guess um, other questions, because I think folks are absorbing, is if folks have follow-up questions is, you know, who should they follow up with? about plethora yes yeah, so i i just placed my email in the chat box it's effi -E -F -F -I, at i am plethora.com and of course you can reach through our website awesome rami can you take this question how do you compare the cognitive load of learning fibonacci fibonacci using plethora and by itself okay so i i, I didn't say and i'm not saying uh, that this is the way to teach Fibonacci uh, uh, sequence. And thank you for, for correcting me. Uh, um, it's, it's just a challenge that if you know Fibonacci sequence, uh, uh, so it, it's like a challenge, try to create it using plethora. And this is, um, understanding the Fibonacci, Fibonacci sequence is not very difficult. You know, we just learned that it's a, a formula. And again, it's, you can understand Recursion, if you want to program it, but if you don't have if you don't have to program it, it's also not very difficult. It's just the sum of, of your of the previous two two elements. So kids can understand Fibonacci even if they don't program. It. But the challenge that I wanted to show you that you can take all kinds of of nice things and try to uh, um, create them using rules. And sometimes this can become very challenging. It's not it's not the way to teach uh, the Fibonacci sequence. Uh, but uh, as I said, uh, showing the factorial, showing uh, the sum of, a, of an arithmetic sequence, all kinds of, of things like this, by trying to, to, to show them as rules uh, is uh, very challenging and very mind opening. Awesome. Um, well, we'll give it another uh, minute or so for folks to ask questions, but I just wanted to say, Thanks so much to the Pazora folks. I know it's uh, later in the day where you are um, and we're trying to offer more webinars and support series um, at various times. So thank you so much for being available. Um, I, uh, our chapter relations manager, Jason was on uh, earlier and I said, oh my gosh, I'd love to kind of use this because I'm learning a lot of CS concepts and it just uh, seemed easy to use and, and quite cute. Um, I guess one of my questions is, is like what feedback have you gotten from kids using this? Yeah, so, so we, we definitely see uh, uh, traction uh, and, and beautiful responses from students. Uh, uh, many of them are, you know, in Israel, we're here so we can see them. Uh, and from three years ago when we uh, started testing it in classes and even now when we have national competitions uh, with all students in Israel that are participating, uh at all grades and we get so uh, uh such exciting responses from both teachers and students uh anywhere from teachers that uh um 
are overwhelmed by by students uh, uh, ability to uh, overcome challenges that they have in class and they're mm -hmm. able to sit down and, and focus on the tasks that they're getting uh, up until uh, students that actually is fix some of our uh, uh, levels that uh, <laughs> there's uh, it, it's really like that uh, I, I would like I would like to elaborate on this in two age groups. Uh, one, one nice thing is that um, in Israel there are these uh, national competitions and it, for the Ministry of Education it was very difficult for many years to engage uh, middle school uh, classes nine, uh, se uh, um, seven to nine. It yeah. was very difficult to engage them in, in playing with these computer science uh, platforms and the maximum they reached uh, was 3,000 participants per year. Mm -hmm. And in the year that Plethora came to the competition, the number reached 18,000. Wow. So it doubled, it doubled by six, and we had 50 50. Actually, it was 49 51 uh, boys and girls percent. Uh, so, this is one thing that, uh, because I know it, because it looks a little uh, with, the, with, with colorful shapes, etc., so it might. Be misleading and think that it's for only for young ages so it is also very very engaging for uh, middle schools and the second thing is for young for young uh, uh, younger kids we we've been in of course in many pilots and we've been observing many many classes and one nice uh, story was that we came into one class and there was one kid that uh, we, we we saw that he, he was not really responding at the beginning and we tried to see what's happening and the teacher said no, you leave this kid, he's not very good in math, he's not very good in, 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 in realistic uh, uh, professions, in science professions. Mm. But then uh, we said, no, but this is not, it's not math, it's just, you know, just thinking. And then he sat and he started playing. And the teacher told us that as time went on, he was one of the, of the leading uh, in, the, in the class. And when we tried to understand what was going there, he did not... Uh, and compare it to anything he knew he, he, was, he was bad in. He, 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 did, he did not think it was mathematics. He did not think it was coding. He did not think it was physics. He just thought it, okay, I just need to play. And yeah. he was very good at it. So the fact that it does not uh, sit on the same uh, 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 square as math, pure math or pure uh, uh, coding uh, yeah. makes many kids uh, uh, feel more comfortable and, and uh, let, let them play and not, uh, not, be, not come with the initial uh, uh, irritate, uh, fear. Right, that accessibility point. And that's, that's awesome. And that's, you know, what we try to support as CS teachers and at CSTA is how do we get their foot in the door and understanding and, and make it engaging and support the, the teacher just during these really hard times. Um, Awesome. Well, I really appreciate everyone's time today. Um, I think maybe we could wrap up a little early. I'm going to go ahead and um, work to see what, you know, if we can throw out some slide decks and um, the recording probably next week. Um, this will also be available uh, for PLUS members, like the recording will be there. I'll send out the recording in an email. Um, and then again, as I mentioned, I'd love to give a discount to folks who are interested in PLUS. And then um, Effie shared that really great opportunity if you want to use those before the end of um, kind of your school year. Um, Effie, anything else you'd like to add before we wrap up? Again, thank you everyone for joining. It's very important for us and we want to spread the plethora world uh, globally. Uh, we have very, very bright uh, uh, plans for the future, uh, including other sciences, but let's focus on this one for now <laughs> and, and talk to you next year about uh, very exciting news we have. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, thank you so much, Effie and Rami and, and, and Mark as well. Mark, would you like to say hello? I know you're also from Plethora. Yeah, hi, everybody. Uh, thank you so much for coming. I really appreciate your time. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. Stay safe, be well. And uh, again, we're here for you. Any questions? Take awesome. care. All right, I'll share out the information and their contact information. Um, everyone have a great rest of your day and we'll see you later. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank, Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Bye.